Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a timeline with Divi's Blurb module. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you how we managed to create this. Okay, so let me start off by creating a brand new page. So for now, I'm just going to close this. Right, so I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So let's call this page timeline. But you can call yours uh, whatever name you want. Okay, so I'm going to click on use the Divi Builder, and then I'm going to go ahead and go into the Visual Builder. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is to add a background color to our section. So I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on background, and then click the plus button to add our background color. So my background here is going to be, uh, is going to have a bit of transparency, so we need to add an RGBA value. So I'm just going to paste my value within the brackets like that. And then we're going to come over here to design, click on spacing, and add 300 pixels padding to the top. Now the reason why we're adding this is because as we start adding all our elements, we'll have enough breathing space to the top of our section. So I'm going to click on save, and now we can see that we have a lot of space on the top there. Next, let's add a three-column uh, three layout. So I'm going to add my three columns here. So for now, I'm going to close this. And then I want to come over here to my row settings. Now it's time to add our background. So I'm going to come over here to background. So column one background, let's add our first color. I'm going to paste it in here like that. Come over here to column two, paste my color, go to column three. Then I'm going to paste my value. Okay, so now we have our colors. Let's come over here to design then click on sizing. Now we need to make this row full width, so let's activate that, save that to yes, and we're gonna come over here to gutter width and set this to one. So what the gutter width does, as you can see here in the preview, is it just brings all these columns together without leaving any spaces between them. And then finally, we're gonna equalize our column heights to make sure that whatever content we have in each of these columns, it's all gonna be the same height, otherwise that messes up our design. Next, let's come over here to our sizing. So for the top padding, let's add one pixel. And then for the bottom here, we're gonna add minus 200, like that. And then we're gonna add zero to the custom margin bottom, like that. Next, we need to add some padding to our columns. So here, we're only gonna add three pixels to the top, bottom, and we're going to do this to the other two. So again, I'm going to paste my top, bottom, top, and bottom, like that. And then finally, we're going to come over here to the Advanced tab, click on Visibility, because we want this disabled on the phone and the tablet. Okay, let's go ahead and save. So the next thing we're going to do is to add another row, just below this one in the same section. So I'm going to click this plus button here, add our three columns. So in these columns, we're going to have blurbs, but we're not going to add this right away. So I'm going to close this for now, and then we're going to go into the row settings. So I'm going to click this gear icon, click on background, and this is where now we're going to add our colors. So, so for column one background, I'm going to click this second tab for our linear gradient, click the plus button, and then I'm going to add my first color. So my first color here, I'm going to paste it like that, click on the second color. This is going to be transparent, so I'm gonna paste my information within the brackets, like that. Gone to the background too, click the uh, second tab, click the plus button, add my first color. Click on the second tab to add my second color. And my second color here is just going to be pretty much what we have here on the top. So just to save me time, I'm just going to copy it and paste it here. Like that. Do the same for the third background. Click the second tab. Click the plus button. Add my second gradient color. Like that. Add my first color. And then here for our start position, we're gonna add 73, and our end position to 92, like that. 
So our direction is find at 180. So what we need to do is just to add the same values on the top here. So our start position is 73, 92. Come over here. Do the same thing. 92. Like that. Okay, so now it's time to go into the design. Click design, sizing. We're going to make this full width like that. And then we're going to come over here to spacing. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our padding. So here I'm going to add zero to my top, 60 to on the right, 100 to the bottom, and 60 to the left. And then we're going to come over here to our custom margin and add minus 100. Perfect. And then for the custom padding, we're going to add five pixels to all the columns on the custom padding top, like that. Right, let's go ahead and save and let's add our blurb. So what I'm going to do here is you can see there's a quite a bit of overlapping. So I need to make sure that I'm selecting the right thing. So I'm going to come over here to expand settings, click on wireframe view. So my items need to come over here on this row on the bottom. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click our blurb like that. For our title, I'm going to call this preparing like that. For our content, I'm going to paste my dummy text. like that. And then I'm going to come over here to image and icon and click on use icon because we need an we need an icon for this. So I'm just going to scroll down here and look for the icon that I'm going to use. And it's right here like that. Click on background. Click the plus button to add our background color and I'm just going to paste it in here like that. Now let's go over here to our design tab and make some customizations. So I'm going to come over here to image and icon and we're going to add our color. I'm just going to paste it in here like that. And by the way, if you want to use the exact colors that we're using throughout this tutorial, you can go to our post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right. So next we're going to come over here to image and icon placement and I'm going to set this to the left like that. And we can see here our icon is quite small. So what we can do to adjust that is to come over here to this option, which says use icon font size, select yes. And we're going to set this to about 50 like that. Okay. So that's much better in terms of size. Next, we, need, we just need to make sure that our text is aligned left. So let's come over here to our text subcategory and we can see here that is aligned left. That's very important. Okay. Right, so let's come over here to our header text. So I'm going to click on it. We're going to search for a specific font. So I'm going to paste it in here. It's called Crete Round. So I'm going to select that. Make sure our size is set to 34. Aligned left. Next, let's come over here to our body text and make some customizations. So here we're going to make sure that it's aligned to the left. Our text size needs to be set at 12. And body line height at 1.7. Okay, so that's that's looking really good. So for this, we are going to be using a border. So let's come over here to our border. Select use border. Our border color is going to be black. So I'm going to paste my hexadecimal value. And then our border width needs to be set to two. And we're going to set this to dotted. Right, let's go on to the sizing. And um, for the content width, let's set this to 279. And for the width, 100% is fine. Right, so we can see here that uh, our, our information in, uh, within this blurb is quite close to the edges. So in order for us to fix that, we need to come over here to spacing and add some margins around it. And the margin for this is going to be three, 30 pixels throughout. So it's going to be 30 top, right, left, and bottom like that. So now we can see that how we have beautiful spacing around our content. Okay, so that's all we have to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Next, we need to add a text module just below our blurb. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my text module, select it. Right, so here, over here on the background, we're going to add a gradient. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click the 
click this plus button. Um, I'm going to paste my first color like that. Come over here to my second color. Now, here we are going to add a color which has transparency. So I'm just going to drag this slider so I can access my transparency settings. I'm going to paste my color in here. And then here for the linear gradient, we're going to set this to radial. Next, we're going to make sure that the radial direction is set to center. And then here for our start position, we're going to set this to 20. And then for our end position, we're going to set this to 24. Like that. So over here on the text, let's add our, our information. This is going to be 0, 1. Click on Design. And then we're going to come over here to our text subcategory and set our size. So our size here is going to be 21. Our text color is going to be white. So I'm going to select it here. Line height is fine at 1.7. And then we're just going to make sure that our text orientation is set to center because we want this text to be within this element that we're, we're designing here. Next, we need to go to the sizing uh, category. Set our width to 48. And then make sure that this is aligned to the right. Lastly, let's add some margins because ideally we want this to be uh, up here somewhere. So we're going to come over here to spacing. Click on top margin and add minus 100. And then for the custom padding, we are going to add 50 to the top and 50 to the bottom. <laughs> so you can see here I got my colors mixed up. So let's go quickly and fix that. So our background color here needs to be this orange, like that. And our background color needs to be transparent. So that's the look that we're trying to achieve. All right, so let's go ahead and save. Now, now that we have all this all set up, all we have to do now, instead of going through all these steps of adding the transparency, the backgrounds, and so on and so forth, we can save time by cloning these and adding them to the right columns. So let's go ahead and do that. So to make sure my cloning is accurate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my click mode. And then I'm going to click the item I need to clone. Clone it. Then drag it over here, like that. And then I'm going to click and clone. And then drag this over here. Perfect. So all you have to do now is to come over here into the settings of our Blurb module. Click on the settings icon. Click on design. Icon and design. And all we have to do here is to change our icon color like that. So it matches the background. We're going to come back here to our text, change this to processing. And we also need to change our icon. And this is the icon we're going to use for that. And then we need to change this color on the text module. So I'm going to save this for now. Come over here to our text module settings. Click on background and paste my color in here. Okay, so now we can see that everything is matching. And then you need to go ahead and do the same. Clone and change the colors for the third column. So what I need to do next is to come over here to my row settings. Click advanced visibility and make sure that I disable these on my phone and tablet. Because we want this layout to be just for the desktop. Okay, and then click Save. Okay, so for you to design a different layout for the tablet, you also need to come over here, duplicate this, and activate desktop, and leave the tablet unchecked. And then just make your adjustments for that. And all those settings that you need for the tablet and phone view will be found on our post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and save and just work on my desktop view. So if I scroll down here, you can see my other views. And this is for the mobile and tablet view, which is disabled for the desktop. Okay, so pretty much that's all we have to do. Finally, we just have to save the page and let's preview. So I'm going to save the page and exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so that's our final design. 
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new videos. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.